So yeah, welcome Damien. Um, you are the director of the movie Pater Rupert, Father Rupert Meyer. Um, actually, you're famous for, for action movies and now you've decided to make a movie about uh, Father Rupert Meyer's life. Why is that topic? Well, uh, I've done a lot of different types of movies uh, since being in Hollywood for 20 years, working as a working actor. Um, I appreciate the comment about being famous, but I'm not so famous. I'm only famous to some people, which is kind of nice, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I, I worked a lot. I did a lot of action films, a lot of gangster films, but I also did a lot of biopics. Mm -hmm. um, I played Bobby Fischer in a movie. I produced and directed a movie about Bobby Fischer, the chess player. I did a movie about Roman Polanski, the only movie ever mm -hmm. made about Roman Polanski. And I've done a lot of films that uh, dealt with uh, digging in deep to the spiritual, psychological life of, of people that were uh, infamous and others that were unique and interesting, and like Father Meyer. Uh, the reason why I was drawn to Father Meyer is because I had an experience uh, in Germany uh, regarding a family situation where I was also, like Father Meyer, put into a prison and... It, Innocently so. So when I was in, I was in actually the same prison as Father Meyer, it's called Stadelheim. And when I was in there, it was a very difficult time, obviously. And uh, I wanted to find a way spiritually, mentally, and psychologically to understand why I was in that situation. And uh, during the time in and out, um, I started to do some research on Father Meyer. So you knew him before? I, I heard his name. I heard that there, there was famous people from Munich in uh, Stadelheim, uh, and one of them was this Father Meyer, but I, it didn't stick with me so well, and, there was, and I heard about the goings-on in the prison and uh, how difficult it uh, was for certain people during the Nazi era. And when I got out, I heard the name again, this Father Rupert Meyer, Father Rupert Meyer. And, and Nicola Meyer told me a little bit more about it, my producer, and I went to the church, Father Meyer Church, and I began to do my own research, and uh, there were some very helpful people there that showed me the museum. And I, I watched this video, and I said, oh, my God, I know this. I understand this feeling of being somewhere that you shouldn't be. It's, it's really such a difficult thing. I think in life, uh, you know, life is very hard for anybody who goes to prison. But when you're in there for doing something, in his case, good, you know, it's really... Uh, it's very, it's even more difficult because if you do something wrong in your prison, maybe you can deal with it. But Father Meyer was simply preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, which for his country at the time should have been okay. This was the dichotomy going on during the Nazi era that, you know, here a country that was founded upon, I shouldn't say founded upon, but I should say at least at the time was a very Catholic, at the very least Christian based country. So, and the theme of the movie is, uh, is similar to what I'm discussing now. There were two Germanys back then. A lot of people in the world don't know about this, especially Hollywood. Hollywood always portrays Germans as these, uh, you know, diabolical people and everybody's a Nazi. And if you don't believe that, just look at all the, the films put out by Hollywood. It's just the same thing over and over. It's very, it's propaganda almost. And I know, I've lived in Germany, I know the difference, you know, and, and, and Germany's a very unique place, but it's also a very, I mean, there, at the time, the Nazi era, there were two Germanys. There were the people who were good, hearted, kind, compassionate people, and then you had the Nazis. It's that simple. And, you know, not everybody wanted to be a Nazi. And it's obvious with Father Meyer, you know, that not everybody wanted to be a part of this system. And the hell that he had to go through because of this uh, deserves uh, more than just this movie. It should be this should be all over the world. His story, in my opinion. And so, so your father, it's a, it's a good story that should be told. Yes, it, it's a story that not just Germany needs to see, and that's why I did it in English, in the beginning because I want it to be an international story. I mean. We've seen so many movies about the Holocaust, and we've seen so many movies about uh, what happened during the Nazi era, but we don't see many movies about the, the struggle of uh, a German hero that, uh, expresses, that expressed his uh, resistance to this uh, diabolical era. So you already said uh, a lot of 
things about the movie, but in three sentences, let's say in three sentences, what's the movie all about? Well, the movie is about Father Meyer's struggle and his resistance against the Nazis, but also it's really, it's, it's a story. Father Meyer is really speaking, his character is really speaking for anybody and everyone who resisted against this demonic activity that happened against uh, human beings. And, you know, it's, it's showing that there were two, Ger it's a story about two Germanies, two different Germanies. It, di it was a diverse nation. I should say it was a, a dichotomy. Germany was a dichotomy at the time. You have this, you know, anybody who would talk about Germany in the 1700s and the 1800s and the 1900s, you know, I mean, Germany was known for the great, or is known for the greatest composers, some of the greatest artists who ever lived. I, I mean, you know, Wagner, you know, all the other uh, that came be between Austria and Germany, you know, Mozart and Beethoven and Bach. Bach, you know, I mean, we could go on and on and on. And by the way, the character, the young prince, and the movie discusses this, you know, uh, a gypsy asks him, hey, what's so good about Germany? Because they're in the camp. And he begins to say, hey, Bach, Wagner, uh, uh, Beethoven, Amadeus Mozart, all these brilliant people. And people forgot, people forget when they're talking about Germany in a worldwide scale, they always, it's always goes back to the same thing, Nazi Germany. But if we looked at America, we could, we could discuss Vietnam or we could, we could discuss uh, even what happened in Iraq and all that, but for some reason it doesn't stick uh, like it does with Germany. I mean, there's something, the stigma never ends. Mm -hmm. And what this story does is it kind of shows the world that there, are, there were two different Germanys. It wasn't just one Germany. And that's what Father Meyer says when he's in court. He says, my God, is this my Germany? I dare say not. This is not Germany. This is, this is another land. And then he says... Uh, Moses, when he came down the mountain, which is, by the way, very biblical, uh, when, Mo when Moses came down the mountain, there were two different Israels. You had the Israel on the right who was worshiping Yahweh, Father God, and uh, the left side was this other Israel worshiping the golden calf. So it's, it's spiritual in a way, uh, but also historical, these divided uh, ways of thinking, uh, one who follows God and one who rejects God. In this case, Father Meyer is saying in the film, his character is saying, look, there, there were two Germanys. You know, one that's following uh, Satan, if you will. In this case, he calls him the prince of the power there, which is also biblical where, where Father Meyer discusses uh, uh, how Hitler you know, one of the characters played by Thomas Morris, a Nazi character, he's telling Father Meyer in the confession, he's saying, hey, look what, look what Adolf Hitler has done. He's, he's created these massive programs for Germany. He's created these incredible uh, flight programs and this great aerospace program. And Father Meyer says he's the prince of the power of the air. Now, this is a very kind of mystical, biblical statement. But what it really means, in my opinion, everybody can uh, think what they want about this, but it means, you know, this power to have all this techno technological uh, uh, knowledge, knowledge uh, this technical, technological knowledge is a hard one to say. And, uh, and yet, what does it mean? I mean, just because you have all this knowledge and technology and all this power, what about your fellow human being? How are you treating them? And basically, uh, it, it shows that uh, there was a great evil on one side and a compassionate, kind, loving Germany on the other side. And he was part of that movement. You just said you, you've seen the documentary about Father Rupert Meyer in, in the museum. And now you, you, you're doing this um, it's a motion picture right now. Um, what would you say percentage-wise? What is the amount of fiction in your movie? Well, you know, I mean, uh, there's a disclaimer in the beginning of the movie. It says this film is not based on historical facts, mm -hmm. but it's based on the truth of the human spirit. Because I don't think any movie, if you want to make a good movie or a good story, you cannot stick to the exact historical facts unless you're doing a documentary. I, however, wanted to play, 
I tell you what it is. It's 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 historically correct in the way that there were two different Germanys. There, that there, you know, obviously in the movie Father Meyer's history about going to Landsberg prison, to going to Stadelheim prison, to going to the concentration camp. This is all historically correct. A lot of I would say, if I had to say percentage wise for the Germans, percentage wise, seventy two percent. I'm just kidding. Uh, but uh, well, in Russia, I would have to say the exact amount. So here, I can get away with seventy two percent. It's a in, inside joke. But you know, the thing is, um, uh, I think it's mostly correct historically. But there are aspects, for example. Uh, uh, Donna von Byron, uh, the character played by Nicola Meyer, is not a historical correct character. However, I had to have all these characters. I, I couldn't put every character that was in the resistance in the movie. So I combined all the resistance spirit, mind, and uh, forward motion with this ideology of resistance against this evil archy or diab diabolical uh, nature that was going on. And I put it into kind of one character that defended Father Meyer. Yes, there were people that were, you know, uh, defending him. And yes, there were specific people that I could name. But I, it was, there were so many that I had to bring it into one fictional character. Mm. Um, you've also written a screenplay. Um, <clears throat> how, yeah, let's say down to earth is the character of Father Meyer? Down to earth? Yeah, how, you, how authentic. Um, oh, I would say the Father Meyer character is more historically correct than any other. Uh, I mean, and I think that, I mean, look, you know, none of us really knew Father Meyer, ex you know, maybe some of the older generation yeah. does. But, uh, I mean, I would say that his character is pretty much, out of all the characters, more historically correct. I mean, let's face it, it's pretty simple. His plight was anti-sermon, uh, anti-Nazi sermons uh, during a time where you could be killed for that. And if he wasn't a priest, he probably would have been dead a lot earlier than uh, the, his death, which was probably provoked from all the, the... He had to go through the camps and jail and all that. But uh, his character, Father Meyer, is one who, uh, you know, in real life he had to suffer. I mean, here, here's a man who had a good job in the church. I mean, he was a Jesuit. It wasn't like he was hurting in a sense of, being a member of the church. He could have just shut his mouth, so to speak, played a good little priest and, you know, said a couple of small sermons and didn't say anything. But he chose a way different path, much like most of the disciples did. I mean, if you look at the history of the disciples in Jesus Christ, I mean, they all died for saying something that was against the powers to be. And in the, in, the, in the case of our Savior, it was different. I mean, he... He didn't even say anything and they put him to death. I mean, of course, in his, in his ministry he did. But the, all the disciples died hor horrific deaths. And I think it falls in line with Father Meyer. I mean, here's a man, you know, the only difference between Father Meyer and the disciples is, uh, it, at the time it was the Romans, and in this case it was the Nazis, you know, and you're going against the powers that be. But Jesus said it would be like that, so... He said, they hated me and they're going to hate you also. So that's what the world did. They hated him for going against the worldly idea, ideas of the time. And he stood up and said, no, uh, I'm going to continue to preach. I mean, they put him in Stadelheim. He came out and he kept preaching anti-Nazi sermons. Mm -hmm. Put him in Landsberg, came out and kept preaching. And then they even put him in the concentration camp. I mean, the power of the spirit. To continue, he was a priest, and it's just incredible. The, uh, the, yeah. This story should have been told in an international way a long time ago. No, mm -hmm. you're the first. By a much this. better person than me. Oh, come on, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you just um, with more equipment. <laughs> uh, you just quoted uh, the Bible. Are you um, religious? Do you believe in God? Well, I, I don't know if I'm religious, but I'm for sure a believer. Uh, I mean, I believe in I believe in the Holy Bible every bit, one hundred percent. And I'm. Are you a Catholic? I was brought up Catholic, and uh, I think that uh, you know, when you get a little older, you start having your own little bit of ideologies. But, but I would say that I'm a defender of the church in a lot of ways, in a sense of what the church stands for, because 
You know, I grew up in Hollywood for 20, 25 years, whatever it is. Uh, I've been there, and uh, and uh, I've seen so much uh, propaganda against the church mm -hmm. that it makes me think, why is there so much animosity in a sense of Hollywood against the church? Uh, you know, it's almost like a propaganda machine. You know, it's always, you know, you... You never see really a great story about the uh, a, a Christianity in general, actually. You know, I mean, the thing with Catholicism and Protestantism is the thing is that there should be a more of a unity because we're all believers in Jesus Christ. And this is the thing. And you know, I mean, we have in Northern Ireland the whole problem. We have this, this problem has gone on from day one. And it's a problem that should, needs to be addressed more. Um, we all as Christians have to come together on one issue, the fact that we believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross, he rose three days later, and ascended to heaven. This should be the only aspect of our belief that, and, and everything else we shouldn't worry about. This is, we all agree on this. And, uh, you know, I think that uh, Father Meyer would probably uh, think the same way. You know, this is the, the aspect that we believe in. And uh, we all believe that people shouldn't be put in camps because there are a certain religion, I should say, uh, nationality or race or whatever, or way of thinking. And, and uh, I'm a defender of the church in the aspect that I think that they, they're getting uh, the raw end of the stick in a, in, a, in a worldly way. And there's a reason for that. And I think probably the reason is it's the only, the only way that Christianity could have existed up until this point is probably the power of the church. You know, everybody's got their faults, you know. If you look in the paper recently, you see a lot of faults with uh, certain people in the church, you know. And I'm not afraid to say that, but I'm not also not afraid to say, look, why don't you see the good? Uh, why, why isn't the good promoted as, as bad as the, every so community? So that's, that's your movie now. Yeah, but that's my movie. And that's what, well, I mean, one of the reasons I decided to do the movie is because of the plight I went to. I wanted to, I wanted the world to understand what it's like to be somewhere that you shouldn't be when you're innocent. That's a basic foundation of where I did it. But then this whole other thing started to evolve. Uh, you know, this whole thing with uh, Father Meyer also, you know, I mean, I'm not so sure. I don't know the exact history of everything. I'm not, I never claim to be a historian. I'm a filmmaker. I'm a storyteller. Mm. But, but uh, for some point, it's not that in interesting whether it's, it's, it's the fact, just the, the whole story should fit for itself. Yeah, well, I mean, I think that, um, you know, the, the story is a universal story. That's why it should be uh, told in a universal way, not just in the confines of Germany. He's a German hero. You know, but there are many American heroes that are sung about, so to speak, uh, in many movies that the whole world knows. And it's, you know, Germany's a big nation. I think Germany has a, a, a the, the German mentality because of the war and because of the Nazi era has really confined uh, the German minds to a kind of a, almost afraid to express. Uh, uh, you know, it's funny, and I noticed this a lot since I've been in Germany. Uh, I noticed that it, people were afraid to express when they're really good at something or if they have something to be proud of. And this is a very big problem because, you know, Germany is a very powerful nation. It's a very big nation. I would say second to the United States is probably, in my opinion, from what I see culturally. And, you know, I don't want to say the United States is better because by far we have a lot of problems in the United States. But, I mean, you know, you're a powerful nation. It, it has a powerful art history a creative history. It needs to be brought back to that uh, place of where it was before the war, where people were proud to be called Germans and proud of their artistic. I'm an artist, so I, I look at, I, I just hit his mic, sorry. Um, proud of the historical art nature of this country. It's a powerful nation in art, and it needs to express itself more, you know, and to be proud of it. Uh, let's talk about how you did the movie. Uh, it's, it's a low-budget production. Was that challenging? Well, I mean, you know, I mean, any movie you do is, uh, you know, difficult. I, I, I take my hat off, so to speak, to any filmmaker, any filmmaker. 
I've been making films, you know, more than half my life. Uh, I know how difficult it is. It's so hard to make movies, even if you have a big crew, which I didn't. Uh, it's hard to make a movie, period. If you're a kid in school or if you're a big guy like Martin Scorsese or whatever, you know, it's, it's, hard. it's, a, it's a hard job. It's a fun job because it's artistic and it's interesting, it's exciting, but there's a lot of labor to it that people don't realize, which I think they'll see when they see this film. I should say this documentary. Um, that it, the, the difficulty of making a movie without a lot of money and without a big crew, uh, it's very hard, you know. It, uh, and, and I didn't have a big crew, so I'm doing a lot of things I, I normally wouldn't have to. Mm -hmm. For example? For example, you know, like usually I would have a gaffer, which is the guy who handles the lights and uh, for people that don't know. Um, and I usually would have a first AC, which is a person, it's called the first assistant cameraman, who, you know, really takes care of the camera equipment and makes my job easier. And I would have a, a first AD, which is very normal, even on small budgets. But the way I work, and especially this movie, we had a 120-page screenplay that we had to shoot in three weeks. It, it was an impossible task that yeah. truly took, in my opinion, they should vote it in as a mini miracle in, in Rome <laughs> because, because it's, it's nearly impossible to do what we did in such a small period of time. It just can't happen. But it did happen. And this spirit that uh, I tried to generate on the set Sometimes, you know, you don't have, you have people in these small productions, I should say small budgets, because it was a big production for small money. Uh, but it were, you know, it was enough. It was enough to do it, and we did it, and we pulled it off, and it looks big. And a lot of that is, you know, pure hard work, and the other part is really, there were, it, it, one miracle after the next, in a little miracle way, happened for this film. Every time I turned around, Somebody would show up, for example, I'd do a scene and I needed a certain type of man or woman and, and there they are, there they were. Please come here, get dressed, you're ready. You know, or, or for example, one of the actors fell out uh, one day and, and this uh, young Moroccan guy was walking by and I said, could you come here? And I, I said, have you ever acted? He goes, no, I never acted before in my life. And I said, well, come here. And we, we took him in and we, we, we got him to do the role and he was so emotional and these little miracles happen all throughout the movie and, and it's what it took, you know, but you have to have belief. You know, this film was based on faith. If anybody, German or American, and we know the Germans are tenacious for organization. And so if I was to go to somebody with the script and, and uh, the budget and and the equipment that I had in Germany, they would say, come on, we have to wait another two months. It's not impossible. We need more time. We need this. And America, the same even. And they're a little bit more cowboy, so to speak. I but mean, in the end, the, the result counts. And yeah, well, it shows that uh, a good movie doesn't need much. I mean, you, well, I think. Or do you think differently? <laughs> well, no, I mean, it would have been nice to have more money, obviously. But um, if you believe, and you want to do something, you can do it. It's, it's the whole, it go, goes back to the Bible that we're all supposed to believe in. You know, uh, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things unseen. And that's what this film was about for me and for the people inside. Nicola and I, you know, we had a faith. We believed we could do it against all odds. We had people constantly telling us, you can't, you can't, you can't. And we said, we can, we can, we can. And we believed. And, you know, Jesus is the one who said, if you have faith as much as a mustard seed, you can move a mountain. That's true, yeah. Um, that the movie is set in different uh, times. Um, is that challenging? Oh, God, that was the greatest challenge because, you know, you know <laughs> you're doing a, a, a film that's grandiose by nature. I mean, there was hundreds of... I should say, around a hundred different characters in the movie throughout, all of them in different costumes and different eras. You know, from 19, 1912, no, I'm sorry, 1897 till 1945. You know, seven different eras. So 
it was another impossibility that we pulled off. And, you know, I think Bavaria Studio was very helpful with that. They really did, you know, I tell you, I've worked in a lot of studios in my life. I worked with uh, uh, Warner Brothers, Disney, Universal. I've worked with just uh, 20th Century Fox. I worked with all of them and all the TV stations, ABC, CBS, NBC. I've worked with all of them, for all of them. And I never got the support uh, ever there that I did at Bavaria Studio. I mean, they were really, they really let me do my thing, so to speak. And that not one time did they, they give us problems at the Bavaria Studio. And, you know, I was like a cowboy out there. You know, I, I, I looked around and I said, this is, this is my studio. It's unbelievable. And nobody gave me a problem. They, you know, they were so supportive. Uh, I really think the Bavaria Studio deserve accolation, deserves accolations here because they really were supportive of the film and me as a director. What about uh, costumes and makeup when we talk about different times? Yeah. Um, you had to really concentrate on the specific time you were just shooting, right? It was very difficult. Um, uh, you know, you have all these different extras and Nazi outfits and and uh, Bavarian clothes that are different eras and hundreds of uniforms and that we had to obtain in order to create this film. And, and I think that, uh, I tell you, I don't know how uh, my wardrobe department did it. Uh, to be honest, I, I, I used to look over there and go, you know, I didn't want to say anything because they were involved in that faith-based aspect of making the movie. I kept saying, they believe like I do. And, you know, it's happening. And I see all these, and the work that they had to do was just, I, I felt sorry for them many times, but I never gave up and, you know, saying, that, you know, the show must go on. No matter what happened, the show, I mean, and, you know, the lady was German and, you know, Germans are very hard workers from what I can see. And uh, in a sense of, you know, I'm generalizing, but that's just, you know, the way it is. They right, seem to be very hard working people. And she had something, what was it? There was like three or four different times in the film that things weren't in place. For example, uh, you know, maybe there wasn't a pennant or the, the, cro the iron cross wasn't there or something. So she wasn't used to this, but I, or, or one time Father Meyer didn't have, his, it was early on, we didn't have the right outfit. So I ran into the wardroom and I pulled this black cape or whatever it was and because it was a wide shot. She goes, no, it can't be, it can't be. I said, yes, it can, it can. We don't see it, it's so far away. So we pulled this drapery over him and put this piece of white thing and it was way in the background. You won't ever notice it because it's such a wide shot. And we just, that was the whole spirit of the movie. Just get it done. The show must go on against all odds. And that's how we got here. I still don't know how it happened. It's a miracle. <laughs> well, we'll see the result on the 6th of March, I think. Yes, yeah, 6th of yeah. March. In this theater, Yeah, but to actually. accomplish it, it yeah. you know, people don't understand, you know, I, I've seen many movies in my life. I've been a part of many movies. The accomplishment of finishing a film, to me, is enough. If whatever happens after that, you know, who knows? You don't care. It could be. I care, okay. but I, I'm just so happy that we accomplished finishing the movie, you know? Really. Well, uh, let's talk about the actors. I really want to know how did you win great Hollywood actors as, such as Stacey Keach and Daryl Hannah over to, to be part of that movie? Well, the, I think that, uh, how, to, how to say this in, in a way where I don't sound uh, arrogant, uh, the fact is they love the script. Mm -hmm. You know, it was that, I think it's pretty simple. Uh, you know, you send the script to people that, you know, are... Uh, names in Hollywood and you know you try you, as a director you always try to get names because first of all it helps generate the the film uh, internationally and also they're great actors so you try to obtain great actors that have a, a notoriety that's the number one rule in, in making good films it's what makes a good film and uh, they responded and they love the script and uh, I think that's ultimately yes I have connections in Hollywood, so to speak. Uh, but, you know, it doesn't mean everybody's going to do the script, especially, you know, when you think that the funds weren't there. It wasn't like we had the funds to offer big money for people, and we did not. We for sure didn't have that. 
So I think, you know, I think that anybody who would look at Father Meyer's story, though, and his plight and what he had to go through uh, would be interested in, in expressing this as an artist, uh, whether they be successful or not, or big name or not. I mean, just, and we got a lot of other people also uh, in Germany that uh, are big names in Germany, like Mikkel Mendel uh, did. Uh, uh, by the way, I think he did such a fantastic job. His performance, uh, to me, is one of the best in the movie, and he was there one day. Mm. What about Oliver Gruber? He's the main oh, character. Oliver's like, well, Oliver is like, <laughs> I mean, I can't say enough about Oliver. I, of course, he was my lead actor. He played Father Meyer. Um, you know, his performance, to, you know, as a director, you look at the performance from actors, uh, especially your leads, and you know, when you have somebody working that hard like Oliver did, you're so appreciative because you know that it's so hard on him. I mean, Oliver had to, Oliver stuck with me from day one. Why did you choose him? Well, I, I'd done a small film with him before and I knew he had talent. I saw the talent. Um, he's a great actor. I mean, look, you're either a great actor or you're not. It's that simple. He's a great actor. And... Um, he has a lot of uh, charisma that, you know, as, as a director, I've been doing this for a long time. You know, you know when somebody has this charisma. It, it's not very often that people have this type of charisma and type of acting ability. So when you meet them and you see them as a director, you hang on to that because it's, it's, it's not as easy to find as people think. And no, Oliver wasn't a big name. As a matter of fact, Oliver hadn't done much at all. But that's how people are discovered. You see their talent, you see their charisma, you see their uh, acting ability, and you say, by the way, he looked very much, in my opinion, yeah. <coughs> excuse me, uh, he, uh, Oliver looked really, uh, uh, not, you know, it's not like he looks exactly like Father Meyer, but he's such a great actor that he gets in tune with the guy and becomes him. And I knew he could do that from my previous performance he did for me. I knew he was the kind of actor that, you know, he absorbs everything and becomes the person. And I needed that. But he had the general look of Father Meyer, too, which yeah. helps uh, because everybody knows what Father Meyer looks like. You know, you, when you're dealing with that, you have to... Especially here in Munich. Especially in Munich, yeah. Everybody knows what Father Meyer looks like. So it was helpful that he also uh, uh, was, was similar to him. But he, Oliver, uh, you know... Uh, to me, when I look at his performance as a director, I don't know what anybody else will think, but what I feel is, uh, I can only say one word, mesmerizing. He's a mesmerizing actor because he's a type of actor when you watch him, you don't take your eyes off him. You, you, know, you, you don't even get the popcorn. You, know, you, you wait for the popcorn because you're looking, well, wait a minute, there's, some, there's something going on there. And it's hard to find that. And I hope that people will see that as I did when, I see the, when they see the performance. And he's very dedicated. It's very dedicated. Yeah. Well, I tell you, he, he's, he's, it's an amazing that we have a guy like him because he, uh, he, he's a dedicated actor, very dedicated. You've been shooting at um, many locations here in um, Munich where Father Meyer really lived, really has been there. Uh, was that important for you while writing the screenplay? Well, I mean, I think it's nice to have, uh, I mean, especially, um, you know, the places where he suffered is important that we had the real look of the place uh, and also the same area. I mean, by the way, I mean, uh, you know, it's amazing that how the man had to go through so much torture. So being in the same city and the same areas and the same church, I mean, the church was a real... Uh, foundation of this movie. The, the Bürgersackkirche, you mean, or the uh, St. Michael's? St. Michael's and the smaller church also, and the uh, Father Rupert Meyer Church itself, the men's congregation. All these people were so helpful and so uh, giving to us and made us, you know, it really was a big part of the film. You know, he was, you know, we had Father Meyer's real churches, the places he preached in the places where he was taken out of to be thrown into jail. I mean, you could feel it when you're doing the movie. At least I could. I could feel, you know, and you, it makes you think like, you know, this really happened. This man really was a priest. He was really in this podium and 
preaching to the people right here in, these, in this place. And he was taken out of here and thrown into prison for simply uh, preaching the words of Jesus Christ, which is what he's supposed to do. Would have worked the, the movie without this locations? Uh, I think it would have been very difficult. I, th I think, you know, obviously I would have found a way to make something work, but it would not have been as easy as it. Uh, I mean, the church has really helped a great deal. Uh, how do you feel thinking of the movie premiere you just said that's not important, uh, what, what, what's com what comes after the movie is not that important, but now thinking of, yeah, this theater, um, 6th of March well, premiere. Mm, <laughs> it's, uh, it's difficult because I have to do it and there's not enough time. But um, I'm hoping there's another miracle. <laughs> so, you know. If you were that lucky, there's probably another miracle. <laughs> well, let's hope so. So, you know, I'm, I'm planning on this. So, uh, it, the, the director's cut's finished today, which everybody said it wouldn't be. They said, no way. I heard that about 99% of the people said, no way, and it's, it's cut. So hopefully the sound gets ready and we're here and it's, everything works out, you know. But, and I, I ho hope that it all works out, and, and that's also a big part, of course. But for me, the, the accomplishment of uh, finishing the film is that I'm living in that right now. So. Mm. so why should people come and see that movie? Well, I think that anybody, especially in Munich, Germany, but specifically Munich, would want to see this film because I think this is more than just a, a film about a, a priest. This is a film about anybody who's German, who uh, did not think like a Nazi. I mean, anybody in Germany who wants to understand the sense of freedom and to express and to feel a part of an expression of German being, being happy about being German and the people who were resistance against this evil. You know, it was a great, it was a great feat to, to stand up against this. It was, a, it was a very scary thing for people to do, and they did it. People died for standing up against this. Father Meyer being one also, even though he died natural, quote-unquote, death, I think that the Nazis killed him because, I mean, he died. Uh, he, suffered he suffered so much, his body was probably, I mean, by the time he got out of uh, the concentration camp, which was his third imprisonment, I mean, his body suffered so much. I mean, he, I think he weighed... 50 kilos at one point. I mean, you know, the, the man suffered so much for, for the resistance. And any German, anybody in Germany should be proud to be a part of this expression because Germany needs heroes now. And they have, you know, the, the world doesn't let them have some. They need some. And it's time to have one. And especially Father Meyer needs to be recognized on a worldwide scale. And everybody should support that. Not just for Germany. This this film should be put out, and it, he Father Meyer's story should be told worldwide, like any other hero, like Mandela or yeah. or any of these other uh, heroes, uh, Martin Luther King or anybody. I mean, why wouldn't? Why why doesn't Father Meyer deserve the same exact status as these people? He did this. He did the same, if not more, for the fight of justice than any man that I've ever seen.